Is this thing on? Welcome back to Big Mouth and fancy seeing you here in June. Oh, very welcome, my friends, and especially my enemies. Come in, sit down, no touching. I don't do the touching. Why did you want a hug? Right. Welcome to Wednesday's edition of the DCEU Daily. Can you tell I'm full of piss and vinegar today because I'm so het up and so wound up. I am so sick to death of this Snyder Cut situation. So, um... Jay Oliver has come out and spoke again, trying to explain to people, trying to be smart asses, why there is several cuts of this film out there. So before I react to all of this, I'm going to read out all the tweets, right? So I'm sure you saw this. If you're, if you're part of the movement to release the Snyder Cut or you're interested in these things, you know what happened. We're, we're going to discuss it. So I'm going to read it out. So there's a guy called Cal L. Wren, a Superman fan, right? As usual, picture of Superman. We don't know who the guy is, but here we go. To the release the Snyder Cut cult list, right? Cult list. So already he starts at an insulting kind of stage. I ask you this, both, both Man of Steel and BBS had a production window start of filming to release of 22 months each. How the hell do you expect me to believe that Zack's cut of Justice League was completed? in a 13-month window. Why can't it? You see, this is what annoys me, right? People who... Um, let, let me, let's just see who this guy is first, right? Yeah, he's got 12 fucking followers. This geezer, right, he's got 12 fucking followers, right? So he's not part of the industry, right? So here we are, right? So, so let's start again. So how the hell do you expect me to believe that Zack's Cut of Justice League was completed in a 13-month window? Right. He, he, he then quote tweets himself, right? And I hate it when they do this. I mean, I do it sometimes. So I'm a bit of a hypocrite. Since we'll never get a straight answer from the man himself, actually, he has given you a straight answer. If you actually go onto YouTube and watch um, what he said at SnyderCon, it's all self-explanatory. He's quite straight and quite honest. In fact, I and many others were so surprised how straight and direct he was about this subject. Since we'll never get a straight answer from the man himself, maybe Jay Oliver can provide me with something, anything. It's clear this movement debate isn't going to rest any time in the near future. No, we are not going to rest. We need to right this wrong. We want to see this film. We are the consumer and we should get what we want anyway. Here's Jay Oliver. What's the question? If you're asking how can the movie be done, you are looking at, at the numbers wrong, which I was about to say actually. Principal photography wrapped in December 2016. I was there for the last shot, so I know this. So are you telling me, this is from Cal El Reno, so are you telling me that the, the entirety of the post under Snyder's watch was completed in five months then? Would you wait until I finish, please? Jesus, says Jay Oliver. And then Cal El Ren replies, you didn't imply you weren't finished, sorry. No worries, I'm just tired and cranky from work. I meant no disrespect. What a lovely chat. Zach, this is Jay Oliver again. Zach then spent the next few months editing. Now, most people think that VFX start then, but that's not true. VFX can start as early as pre-production. Again, this is true. I know this as a director. The storyboard stage. If a scene doesn't require the actors like digital doubles, VFX can already start way before shooting. And again, you've got these so-called fans and people thinking they know about how much something costs, how it's done, just because they watch some bonus features or they see a Midnight's Edge video, right? Right, here's Jay Oliver again. Now in, now in edit, the director cuts the footage down multiple times to show execs the progress. Again, this is true. These are known as director, as director Cut X. This will go on for months based on the studio notes or anything new the director might need. Reshoots are planned. Now, during all of this time, those VFX shots don't stop. They've been going on since pre-production. It's a VFX sequence. Is If a VFX sequence is totally cut out and never to go back into the timeline, then they will stop the effects for that shot. So yes, if you want to see a version of the entire film from a story standpoint, then there, there exists multiple cuts of Zack's film prior to Whedon's involvement. Everything was shot and edited into something he screened execs. So, so if said cut doesn't exist, 
then what did Zach show? Exactly, because Jay Oliver's a smart guy. He's not, and this is the difference on when you're John Campion working off bullshit and when you're someone who actually worked on the bloody movie. Now I'm done. And I think that's all he has to say. And of course, Mr. Kalel Ren goes really, really quiet. And this is the problem, isn't it? This is the problem when you think you know about the process of films. There's too many, you know, there's too many normies out there now, right? Everyday people who think they understand um, the process of making a film, the financial aspect of the film. Now, I remember reading out John Aaron Garza's whole thing, how much it would take to finish this film. The problem with what John Aaron was saying, and I didn't dispute it that much when I read it out, the thing is, he doesn't know. He doesn't know. He's not part of the process. And it was a great article. John Aaron Garza is an extremely intelligent guy, but clearly he's working off a blank hymn sheet. He doesn't know the situation. Again, you know, Jay has said there's multiple cuts that have been edited down, right? And so if if the Snyder Cut was implemented, if Warner Brothers ring Zach up and say, right, we've been worn down, son. You need to do this. We need to move on from this. So he looks at all his multiple cuts and he can put, he can edit together the film. He can either choose one of his cuts or he can choose to, you know, to cut together another version of the film and get music on there. So we know now from what Jay's saying, there's multiple cuts that have been edited together. Now, obviously, there may not be music, but there's definitely VFX. Maybe that needs to be cleaned up a little bit. But we kind of know now that it wouldn't take very long or too much finance to do this, right? To do this. So what this is come obviously this has come back into the spotlight because of what John Campy was saying that there's only an assembly cut, which is again, John Campion, I don't know if he's ever been involved in the film industry. I think he claims he has. But at the end of the day, he's and it was really funny, right? He made the whole post for some attention, but he's been embarrassed and what he's done, because he's got a lot of light on him. When someone who's verified with a lot of light on them does something like this. They put the whole movement back into the spotlight. So John Campier, I'd like to thank you because inadvertently you've put us back into the spotlight. And if your aim was to put take less pressure away from Warner Brothers, you put even more pressure on them. So thank you, John Campier. Thank you, John Campier. But this, none of this would be an issue if A, after Batman v Superman, Warner Brothers, if they weren't happy with Zack, sorry, mate, you're not doing your movie. Or afterwards... After he cut his movie, they they acted a bit better, right? So if he does his movie, they say, do you know what, um, Zach, we are going to let you put out your movie, right? We're too far down the road. But after this, we're done. You're a very unique, inspirational filmmaker. But unfortunately, we need to put butts in seats. We need the mainstream audience to be, we want MCU type of money. So it's been great. No hard feelings. See you later. That's what should have happened. Now, let's look at another situation. Let's look at Star Solo, a Star Wars story, right? So when the Lego movie directors um, were booted off of um, Solo, a Star Wars story, Disney came out, Kathleen Kennedy came out, Lucasfilm came out and said, listen, we've had creative differences. We're bringing in Ron Howard. And Ron Howard admitted he wrote, he rewrote and reshot most of the picture. There were no lies. But the difference is with Justice League, Warner Brothers came out with a lie. Warner Brothers fed Zack a lie because he had no choice because he's under their gun. So he has to do what they say, because basically, if he doesn't do as, as they say when he puts out, you know, his announcement of uh, moving away from Justice League, they can make sure he never makes another movie again. We all know that. So he comes out and says he thought he could bury himself in his work, but he couldn't. The suicide of his daughter has been too much. And maybe it was. But the point is, right, they got him to say that. Then he says, my good friend Joss Whedon will just polish up this film and finish it for me. It's still my film, blah, blah, blah. Another lie he was forced to say. We all know that now. We all know that now. This is not Joss Whedon's fault. Joss Whedon was in a tricky position of also being brought in by Warner Brothers to write and direct a Batgirl movie. This was the man's dream project. They said to him, if you want to carry on working with us on that project, 
you have to turn this movie into a mainstream, fun, MCU-type movie. He had no choice. He was, he was put in such a horrible, awkward situation, and he did his best. And he did turn around and give a, at least somewhat of a cohesive film. But he was under the gun. He couldn't do better than what he did. So that's why I don't like people attacking Joss on Twitter and things like that. That situation isn't his fault. It's all down to Kevin Sujihara. Hara, not Jeff Johns, nobody else but Kevin Sujihara. And this is where it all went wrong. Now, meanwhile, because this shit, it was an absolute shit fest, an embarrassment on the studio for their actions. So what's made it worse for them since all this has happened? They've kept quiet. So allegedly... They got Ben Fritz to do a hit piece, right? He was interviewing people from the Snyder movement. He was, you know, apparently talking to insiders from Warner Brothers who say there's no cut. They lied. They all lied. We all know it's a hit piece, right? So be careful in future when you do interviews. I know that I, I noticed that um, uh, Chris Wong Svensson has done another interview for another article about the Snyder cut. I really don't. I really hope they don't hang him out to dry. But if they do. Look at it like the John Campier situation, where at least it puts the movement in the spotlight. And I want to say one thing. There's too many people now who think they know how this industry works. Every time I see an article, dear film, breaking news, controversy, film to go back with reshoots. All films nowadays have more reshoots than they ever do. It's not controversial to go back and have reshoots. Grow a brain. Think about it instead of reacting to stupid articles. And that's all I've got to say. So we are still where we are with the Snyder Cup, where Warner Brothers are not saying anything. They do not want to release this movie. I don't know any different than that. I do not know any insider knowledge. But again, well done, Jay Oliver, for coming out. A guy with, what, five or whatever followers creating an account with a Superman kind of profile picture just to try and be clever. But really, he just did that to kind of get some attention. But at the end of the day, he did get the response from Jay Oliver he wanted. And maybe he's part of the movement, this fake account. Maybe he wanted Jay Oliver to come out. Look, I don't know the situation. But again, Jay Oliver brilliantly explains the situation. Multiple cuts with VFX edited together. We know that. So putting together the ultimate cut for this movie, for Zack's definitive vision of what he put onto film, can be done. It can be done within, I think, two or three months. There's no question about that. It can be done. But however long it takes, we deserve to see his vision of Justice League so we can put this whole sorry mess to bed.